Hey everybody, Joe Coffey here for PremierGuitar.com. We are on location in San Luis Obispo, California to check out how guitars are made by Ernie Ball Music Man. Um, they have another facility where they make strings right here in San Luis Obispo. This is where they make the basses and guitars. So let's go inside and check it out. All right, we're here with Sterling Ball at a workstation. Tell me, what are we looking at here? Well, what we're looking at is this is a reflex that's just coming out. and. Uh, the setup department is the greatest place because if everybody does their job right, all through the sequence of making the guitar, setting up the guitar is easy and perfect. Um, this is where the, you can't really fix the problems through, but we spend a lot of time on our front work, a lot of time on our setup. Um, I like to come down here and torture them every once in a while. and. Uh, Look at our neck joint and make sure it's really good. Want to make sure the finish is good. I see no obvious flaws. Okay. Like the shielding here we're using. Um, looking for no sharp fret ends. Looking for... No buzzing, no fretting out. And my pet peeve is a high nut. Okay. And most uh, nuts in that I go and see in guitar stores, the nut should really only be as high, this much higher than that fret. And if there's something wrong, it gets cut in half. Seriously, in 1984, we said we don't make seconds. Okay? The customer is not our quality control department. The customer is not our setup department. The other thing is, our goal here is to make tools for artists. That's like a backwards tour. Okay. Okay, because it ends here, but I'm gonna show you how we make it. This is where they're doing the electrical sub-assembly. And you see this, you've got nice uh, things to keep the solder from dripping on the guitar or the bass. These control arms turn, articulate, so but it never touches the surface. We spent about 45 minutes on our fret jobs. We don't use Plex machines, they're fine, but we just use um, good luthery. The deal is, throughout this factory, you're going to see where we use a machine, and then you're going to see where we use human beings. Because I don't believe that human beings can consistently do it, and I don't believe machines can do I think the success is when you're able to identify where the handwork is most important and where the machine work and consistency is, and that gives you kind of a guitar with a little bit of soul. I can tell you the people who roast it, because we don't roast it. A lot of people call it vulcanized and different things, but it, it it's uh, allegedly had... Uh, it's been roasted and it's catalyzed the, the resins in it and the moisture's out of it. Uh, I don't know if there's a specific performance advantage. All I can tell you is it's beautiful. And it seems to be very stable on all our tests. And the people who roast it seem to be able to get all the good figured maple too. Ursula's our buffing robot. Okay, see on this conveyor, see how they're all different ones, all different colors? That's not normal in a factory, okay? But this represents either a customer or a dealer's order. We have here is a radio uh, RFID deal that's loaded with what this is, okay? There's one on the back of the JP here. I can't take it out, but you can see. If you get back here, you'll see that. And what happens is, since we're letting our customers tell us what we make rather than us tell our customers what we're going to make. It comes here and it gets scanned. And when she's done, you'll see that there's that flat plate there. That's a reader. So she'll grab that base. She'll hold it in front of there. It'll identify the program. It'll reload the program in the buffing machine and then buff a Stingray Classic. Here it goes. Look. See, that's, that's clearing it. Now it's going to put it back on. Now this is an example where the machine can do all the buffing, okay? But the final buffing's all, see it's reading it right now. It's loading the program. Now we're ready to buff a loop. Pretty cool, isn't it? But see, look, there's all kinds of hand work here. All kinds of hand work here. 
because like I said, you can't do it all on a machine and, and doing it by hand, we just would never be able to uh, keep up the consistency and the numbers we need to do to be successful. See, they're doing some uh, finished sanding before it goes to Ursula. These people can feel like the ten thousandths of an inch. I mean, it's unbelievable. One of the keys is making sure the finish is cured. A lot of people use UV cure. We actually use heat. Yeah, it's toasty in here. Yeah, it is. This is nice. I like this. It's cold outside. Look at that nice color, huh? So these will be in here in four days, and uh, we can ship it to Malaysia and Alaska and know that the finish is either going to shrink or expand and not going to finish crack. Look at these. Sorry about these flaws in the wood here. <laughs> okay, they're not flaws. Watch the clear coat he's doing. There's 120,000 different combinations you can order our stuff and then people still want a custom shop. Up to 27 coats goes on these. Wow. Very, very fine though. This is all the nice handwork after it comes off the machines. And she can feel ju just right, huh? The difference between a good guitar and a great guitar is about 100 details, okay? And so we hope we know what they are after th almost 30 years. So you see, after we put the frets in, there's a gap there. A lot of people just let the, the finish fill the gap. See, she's taking a lacquer that's color matched to the wood. And she takes a soldering iron. There's rosewood, look. She just dabs it on there. And she uses it as filler. And the end result is this, no gaps. I should probably talk about Ball Family Reserve. One of the reasons why we did Ball Family Reserve was really to kind of remind ourselves and the world that we're a family-owned business making guitars. And the Family Reserve was an opportunity for us to offer things that normally only artists would get or family and friends would get. It gave us a, a wider palette, gave us the ability to make a lot of other things under the Ball Family Reserve moniker. So um, it's not marketing, it's legitimate. All the BFR stuff is very unique, but I'm just proud to remind everybody that you know this is a family-owned business. And what started out is an industry full of family-owned businesses. There's very few of us left. He's doing some pneumatic sanding, but then the final sanding will all be by hand, okay? But he's taking the machine cut marks off. Now see that's held on with vacuum and he can move that in any position he wants. It's the details, baby. The devil's in the details. He's putting the frets in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a back bow intentionally in it. And then once he gets it where he wants, he'll turn around and show it to you. What happened was it was already negative, it was already negative 10, so I, did, I just zeroed it out because we want to make sure that it's negative on the back bow. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this off. Now he's gonna swing the radius. So what we're doing is we're sanding our back bow off, too. Okay, so now when this is done and he's got the radius he wants, which he'll do a radius check pretty soon, he'll release the truss rod and it'll give us exactly what we want. But then when it's completely tight, it's straight. Well, we're kind of known for our necks. And we're known for our neck shapes, but also the performance of our necks. And this is one of the reasons. So he's making sure he didn't take off too much. Look, he's a genius, he got it right away. Now he's putting it, sawing the frets.
It's quick. Watch it. You'll miss it. There we go. Then he's going to release it and it's going to be like butter. This is doing the chambering of the reflex. This is what a reflex looks like. Half body is chambered. That's a very specific pattern that we engineered for the maximum resonance. Bound guitars. You see, this is the body wood, this is the top wood. Now, if it's bound like the Steve Morse or the Axis, we'll come in and we'll route a channel around it, okay? Now keep in mind, binding's hard plastic. Most people take the hard plastic, form it, and then use a heat gun to melt it around. Well, if it starts out as a liquid, why don't we use the body as the mold? So what we do is we route, oversize a channel here. We put the binding in in liquid form. And then when it goes on the machine, it gets cut perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Because the Fidel doesn't know the difference between the binding material and the wood. So you look at our binding, it's dead flat and you can't find a seam because there isn't a seam. Blowing fretboards. See, so there'll be a gang of them. So this is the fun part. Look at, they're doing the back contour. Now, you see a simple contour on a bass or guitar, and you think, oh, it's just a little scoop. Look at all the numbers going down. That's all XYZ coordinates for the body. That's telling, it where, that's telling that head to where to move. How accurate are CNC these days? Incredibly accurate more accurate than your dentist. We buy already treated and dried wood. These are two kilns here, okay? You see fretboards going in, but get a shot of that tank right there. That's water that's come out of what is supposed to already be dry wood. So you see, we bake the guitars in the hot box because we don't want them shrinking or expanding. The other thing is we make sure that we get them good and dry here. We don't take the mill's word for it, and you can tell by all the water that's in there. Sanding some tops. The guy in our factory that does the book matching is unbelievable. Wow, Cheap guitar maker trick. You want to see what it looks finished? We start with a piece of maple that's the same same piece of wood as the fretboard. And we mark it, 3838 for example, what it is, we bandsaw it off. Then we route for the truss rod, okay? We put the truss rod back on, then we glue this back on, and it's the same piece of wood. And that's why with the music man, look, you can't see the seam. And the reason why is it's not a separate piece of wood for the fretboard, it's off the same piece of lumber we buy starting oversize. Let me see one of those bases. Just one of the classics, it's fine. Like you're noodling, but I assume what you're doing. I mean, there's a rhyme to the reason. I saw the harmonics, the chromatics, and uh, you're yeah, checking every single fret. Tune. What are your thoughts on this one? Perfect. <laughs> it is. I mean, give it a try. So that's our story.
You got any final questions? How many times have you had to change up the process that you have here? Which is, I've been in through a lot of these. This is very different. Uh, how long did it take you to, you know, well, get to? It's not me, first of all. It's, uh, it's Dudley, it's the engineers, it's uh, each one of the team leaders, and that's what we actually call them. And uh, it's, it's input from everybody. It's like when I told you I didn't want the cust I didn't want to tell the customer what we were going to make. I didn't tell them how to make a guitar, but I told them what kind of guitar we wanted to make. And uh, that's pretty much what we've done. I mean, you put a gun to my head, I can't make a guitar. I know what a good one is, though. And I know when it plays right. And actually, I know a fair amount of just because I've been doing it all my life. But um, my toolkit at home is Yellow Pages or the Internet. This is passion-driven. This is seeing, finding a niche that we've been lucky enough to be, uh, to have earned a little bit and to have been given and, and how we've managed to, to hang in there and within that niche. And, and it's respecting that niche. It's not, it's not resenting it after a while. It's, it's understanding it's great to make a Stingray bass and it's great to make a uh, Luke guitar. It's great to make a Steve Morse. We don't ever have to be the biggest because we already are in electric guitar strings. A CEO is a dirty word in this um, in this current world and environment, but I mean, you got to have thick skin and uh, be very committed because you're tested all the time. And we're tested too. Certainly. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Joe Coffey. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.